students. And um, I'm an assistant professor in George Washington University in chemistry department. Um, and Li Chuan is a postdoc and an NCI. So I will introduce the first two speaker. And first we have Professor Hong Kai Ji. Um, he is a professor of biostatistics in John Hopkins, and he's gonna talk about a statistical, statistical framework for differential pseudo time analysis with multiple single cell RNA-seq samples with application to COVID-19. Welcome. Okay, hey, thanks. Um, can you all see my screen now? Yeah, we can. Good. Not the, uh, yeah, this is good. Okay. Yeah, first I want to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to this symposium. And it's my great pleasure to share our recent work on analyzing single cell genomic data. And we are a computational lab, so we develop a lot of methods for analyzing single cell data. And in the past 10 years, all of us have witnessed the rapid development of single cell genomic technologies. Unlike the conventional bulk technologies that analyze uh, average behavior of cells in a cell population, single cell technologies allow you to analyze the behavior of each individual cell. And with this ability, uh, people can now detect new cell types and characterize their molecular profiles. And people can also study cell-cell interactions or map uh, dynamic regulatory programs either a long time or across different spatial locations. And in 2013, single cell sequencing actually was named as the method of the year by Nature Method. And again, in 2020, Nature Method uh, named the single cell multi-omic analysis as the method of the year. With all this exciting development in technologies, analyzing single cell genomic data is non-trivial. There are many types of analysis you can do. And one common analysis I'm going to talk about today is pseudo time analysis, also known as trajectory analysis. And this type of analysis is particularly useful for analyzing cells uh, uh, at, uh, that represent different stages in a continuous biological process. For example, if you have a cell population consisting of cells, uh, synchronized cells at different developmental stages, then you probably want to use this type of analysis. And um, the first pseudo time analysis method for single cell RNA seq was proposed in 2014 in this Nature uh, Biotechnology paper. There, the authors develop a method called Monaco. In that method, what they do is they first project cells into a low dimensional space. And here, each node represents a cell. Distance between two nodes represents the similarity between two cells. And the more similar two cells are, the shorter the distance. And the monocle method constructs a spanning tree to connect all the cells and try to minimize the total edge length of the tree. It turns out that this minimal spanning tree can capture the biological process. For example, if you move from one end of the tree to the other end of the tree, uh, you sort of can see the progressive changes of cell status from undifferentiated status to a differentiated status. And the branches of the tree often correspond to different cell lineages. In this way, you can assign a pseudo time to each cell and convert this data set into a pseudo time course so that each cell can be viewed as a sample along this pseudo time course. With this pseudo temporal trajectory, you can then analyze how each gene changes its expression values along this pseudo time. And as, as a result, you are going to have a transcriptome wide view of gene expression dynamics along a biological process. In the past few years, many methods have been developed for analyzing uh, to conduct a pseudo time analysis using single cell RNA seq data. However, most of these methods only consider one sample or they treat cells in a data set as if they were from one sample. And a uh, few of them consider the problem of uh, uh, comparing multiple samples where the samples can represent different uh, biological conditions. And multi-sample data actually become increasingly more common. For example, in the past two years, more than uh, hundreds of COVID-19 patient samples uh, are profiled using single cell RNA-seq. As another example, multiple research groups have used the single cell RNA-seq to profile multiple patient samples in order to study the uh, molecular features associated with response to cancer immunotherapy. And if you use uh, existing method to analyze uh, this multi-sample data, you are going to have a big problem. 
So this slides uh, illustrate, use an example to illustrate what the problem is. And here we are considering comparing four male samples and four female samples. And if you fit a, uh, here you have two example genes, and for each gene, you can fit a pseudo-temporal curve to characterize its gene expression activities along pseudo-time for each patient. Right? So you have eight curves representing eight, dif uh, eight different people. And you can see uh, there is huge sample level variability, and uh, from people to pe from individual to individual, the curves are very different. And given this huge sample level variability, there is no significant difference between males and females. Okay. However, if you use <coughs> existing methods such, such as monocle, slingshot, or other methods to analyze this data, they will tell you that these genes are differentially expressed between male and female. That's because they pull all cells from the male samples and treat them as if they were from one single sample. So for each gene, they are going to uh, fit a male specific curve, that's the blue curve here. And similarly, they are going to treat all cells from these four female samples as if they are from one single sample and treat one curve, that's the uh, yellow curve here. And then they are going to claim that this difference is significant. That's because they assume that all these cells, regardless of the sample origin, they assume that they are independent. And because each of these curves in their method are, sort of, uh, uh, they think are supported by many, many independent observations. And they are going to conclude that this difference is uh, highly confident and then it's highly significant. However, that's not the case. That's because cells from different people are not independent because cells from the same individual actually have very similar expression values. You cannot treat them as independent observations. As a result, the effective sample size used to support this curve fitting is not thousands of cells, but only four samples within each group. As a result, they are going to produce misleading uh, results. So in for example, in a now data set where you don't expect any true differentially expressed gene, this existing method usually we will put hundreds to thousands of differential genes and all of them are false positives. Right? So unlike me, who are a computational guy, many of you in the audience actually run wet labs and do bench, the bench work and do actual experiments. I'm sure that uh, none of you actually want to spend your time and money on testing or following up these hundreds or thousands of false positives. So then what's the solution? So in order to solve this problem, we have developed a, a, a study of framework and open source software tool called Lamian to handle it. Why we call it Lamian? Because uh, when you look at these uh, fitted temporal curves for each gene from uh, different samples, they look like noodles. So we want to give it a delicious name. So we call it Lamian. But um, how this method works is we first um, integrate cells from different samples uh, uh, by embedding them into a common low dimensional space. And then we provide four different analysis modules. In the first module, we are going to construct the pseudo time uh, using the integrated cell R class. And then uh, we are going to use bootstrap to evaluate the uncertainty of the pseudo temporal topology. In other words, whether the branch uh, actually is there or whether it's just a noise. And if the branch is, is there, and we are confident uh, that this branch is true, then in the second module, we're going to ask whether this branch, the presence of this branch is a differential between different sample groups, like between disease and the normal samples. And next in module three, we are going to detect differentially expressed genes. There are two types of differential genes. Type one differential is called uh, TDE genes. And these genes change their expression activities along the pseudo time. So we call it a pseudo time differential expression or TDE. And the type two differential expression is called XDE. These are genes whose pseudo temporal patterns uh, actually are different between different sample groups, like between male and female, they have different uh, temporal patterns. Okay, so we detect two types of differential genes. And similarly, in module four, we analyze uh, cell abundance or cell composition changes along pseudo time. And we have TCD test, which uh, detects dif uh, changes of cell abundance along pseudo time. And we also have XCD test, which detects the uh, uh, changes of the pseudo-temporal cell abundance trajectories between different sample groups. So that's the overview of the uh, method. 
And uh, throughout this analysis, we consider both sample level variability and the cell level variability so that we can avoid uh, those uh, false positives. And then there are sort of a, a sophisticated statistical model behind it and many formulas involved, and I'm not going to show them here. If you're interested, you can uh, go to our uh, bioarchive preprint and uh, find out all those details. But uh, uh, after we sort of consider the sample level variability, uh, actually you can so, uh, correctly uh, report your results without inflating the type one errors. And uh, for example, in now data set, in a null data set where we don't expect any differential expression, and um, Lamian correctly reported zero differential genes, whereas all these other methods reported hundreds to thousands of false positives. And then to systematically uh, benchmark Lamian, we actually uh, performed uh, uh, realistic simulations where we first get a null data set with, without any differential expression. And then we computationally spiked in different types of differential signals into the data and perform differential analysis using different methods and compare them. So this slide summarizes the uh, uh, result. On the left-hand side, what you show is uh, we are asking whether different method can control the false discovery rate. And here on the y-axis uh, is the difference between the real false discovery rate and the reported false discovery rate from each method. And here, a um, value below zero, a negative value is good because it means that the actual false discovery rate is smaller than what you reported and the positive value is bad. And the x-axis represents different signal to noise levels. And the red curve corresponds to Lamian, the other colors correspond to the other method. And you can see that Lamian can always correctly control for discovery rate, whereas the other methods cannot because they fail to account for sample level variability. And then on this part, the uh, right-hand side, we compare the sensitivity of different methods. Basically, we construct the sensitivity versus real FDR curve, and then compute the area under the curve. The bigger the area, the more sensitive a method is. And then you can see, uh, regardless of uh, signal to noise uh, level, Lamian consistently performed the best and uh, out from all these other methods in terms of sensitivity. Therefore, Lamian can correctly control force discovery rate and also provide the highest sensitivity. And with this, we uh, uh, applied Lamian to analyze COVID-19 single cell RNA-seq data. And as you know, COVID-19 disease severity can progress from mild to uh, moderate to severe. And it was reported that the mild to moderate transition is a stage where the immune landscape can change rapidly. And therefore we focus our analysis on uh, 66 mild patient versus 48 moderate patient. And then we collect the uh, naive T cell and CDA T cell from this patient and construct the pseudo temporal trajectory. And we obtain the one path without any branch. And this trajectory actually corresponds to uh, CDA T cell activation, as can be indicated by the differentially expressed genes along the pseudo time. For example, you can see that uh, naive and uh, um, uh, memory T cell associated genes like TCF7 and cell, they are upregulated at early stages of the pseudo time, whereas um, uh, effector uh, genes or uh, terminal differential genes like uh, Gramzan B or granulysin genes are upregulated at the later stages of pseudo time. So we know this correspond to a T cell activation uh, process. And then we ask uh, whether the cell abundance changes along the pseudo time are different between mild patient and moderate patient. And we see significant difference between these two groups of patients. And uh, when you look at this plot, you can see actually the abundance of the activated effective T cells actually are increased in moderate patient. And finally, we um, ask uh, which genes actually show differential pseudotemporal patterns between mild and moderate patient. We detected uh, above 1,000 such differential genes, and we found that these genes can be grouped into different patterns. So we did a classroom analysis to identify those patterns. And just as two examples, uh, in cluster one, uh, what you see are genes like TBX21 or ZAP2 in this cluster genes usually show lower expression values in moderate patients compared to the mild patient. And the difference between the mild and moderate increases 
uh, along this uh, biological process, along this T cell activation process. And we know that uh, uh, T, uh, uh, TBX1 and uh, uh, ZEP2, these are transmit factors for CD8 T cell effect response and uh, interferon gamma production. So this suggests that the mild patient has a more robust functional effect of CD8 T cell response. And as another example, when you look at the cluster six, you can find uh, uh, interfering stimulated uh, genes like IFI6 or terminal differentiation transmit factors like PRDM1. And when you look at the expression pattern, you can see that these genes have increasingly more accurate, uh, uh, upregulated gene expression in moderate patients. This suggests that the stronger inflammation signals in those moderate patients uh, may induce a sort of uh, 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 T cell, CD T cell termination. Okay, so this provides a example to illustrate how our Lamian framework may be applied in uh, real applications to help you sort of uh, uh, decode the gene regulatory programs. And then finally, we um, did a sort of uh, another test by compare to compare Lamian with other method. In this test, we separated, we split the samples uh, in this COVID dataset into two separate datasets, and we applied each method to uh, to each subset of this data and ask how reproducible are the results from these two datasets. Okay. So a method with higher reproducibility uh, suggests that this method is better in terms of control force positive and the force discoveries. And we compare different methods and this plot shows the result and you can see like um, as uh, Lamian always provided more consistent results between so the two, two different data sets for studying the same biological phenomena. This again shows that we are better able to control the force discoveries compared to all these other methods. Okay, with this, I think I'm going to summarize uh, my uh, talk. So uh, in summary, I have introduced a new statistical framework called Lamian uh, that provides a new tool for pseudo time analysis with multiple samples. It allows you to compare differences between different sample groups and then the fact that we consider both sample level variability and the cell level variability allow you to better control force discovery rate. And it also offers higher sensitivity. And uh, future extensions may include, uh, we can extend this framework to other single cell data types like single cell ataxic data or single cell multi-omic data to construct multi-omic uh, pseudo temporal trajectories. And I, with that, I'm going to uh, uh, end my talk. And I want to thank all my lab members and collaborators at UPenn from John Ver Ver Lab uh, for contributing to this uh, work. And I also want to thank funding from NIH. All right, thank you for your attention. Thanks, Kung Hai, for the, for the great talk. It's really nice uh, method. And also, I see it's a great improvement in, in terms of false discovery and also great names. <laughs> Thank Let's, you. Um, see if there's any questions from audiences. Uh, maybe I'll ask one general question. So when you look at the false discoveries, um, have you examined how many percentage are false positives? And is there any false negatives discoveries in the data? There definitely are false negatives as well, right? But, uh, but the main problem in most applications are there are too many false positives. And then as I uh, showed in the slides, in some scenarios, you don't, you really don't expect any differential gene because we, we have uh, sort of uh, patient samples from the same condition, we just randomly split them into two. But if you run the existing method, you have thousands of differential things. That's, that's dangerous, right? So people tend to report that as uh, we have many significant findings, but indeed they, all of them are noise. So I just want to let you know that you probably want to avoid that in your own paper. <laughs> Thank you, Hong Kai. Yeah. yeah, so now um, it's 